Let's do an example. We're going to run the variable elimination algorithm uh, from uh, manually the whole way through. Uh, so, so here we go. Um, so we're going to do this in the wet grass example. We've seen this once or twice. So in this example, we have a network that looks like this. We have, is the grass wet? Is it raining? Are the sprinklers on? And is it cloudy? So again, cloudy means up in the sky, are there clouds? Is the sprinkler, are the sprinklers on? Was there rain today? And is the grass wet? Uh, now we're going to give the network here. So let's give the whole thing. Uh, we need four conditional probability tables to specify this network, as we've seen before, one for each variable. By the way, might be good to pause and think about what, how you would assign these uh, conditional probability tables. Uh, for for this just based on your world knowledge, but let's do that ourselves. Okay, here we go. So for C cloudy, we have one half, one half. Let's say it's probability one half for there to be clouds today. Might depend on your climate. Uh, okay, how about for sprinklers? By the way, I'm implicitly saying the first column is zero, the second column is one. I'm not gonna write that all the way out for all of these. Sprinklers depends on clouds. So we're gonna imagine that the, uh, the owner of this house turns on the sprinklers preferentia preferentially if there's no clouds. So if there's no clouds, they turn it on with probability, whoops, uh, if there's oops, no clouds, they turn it on with probabilities 3 fourths. And if there is clouds, they leave it off with probability 3 fourths. Turn it on with probability 1 fourth. Okay, for rain, let's imagine, again, rain is a child of cloudy. If there's clouds, there's a 1 half chance either way that there's rain or not. If there's no clouds, there can't be rain. So there is a 100% chance that there'll be no rain. And finally for wet grass, that depends on cloudy, sorry, it depends on rain and sprinklers. We get a table here and we're going to say that if there is if either the rain or the sprinklers are on then the grass is wet otherwise the grass is not wet okay so we've specified our our uh, model we're going to try to answer the question what is probability of cloudy given wet equals true. And we're going to do that using variable elimination. So the first thing we're going to have to do is convert this to an MRF because we defined it uh, using, using uh, we define variable elimination on MRFs. Alternatively, we just define it on plain factors. You could think of it either way. Uh, okay, so how do we do that? These are all fine. Here's one factor, here's another factor, here's another factor. We just have to 
convert those to undirected edges. How about this one down here, this factor over R, S, and W? We've seen this before. Remember that we have to moralize this triple here because the coparent induces uh, an edge between rain and sprinkler because they both appear in the same factor. And then these edges become undirected. But we've also observed wet equals to one. So this factor becomes something that looks like this. We just grab this column of the factor, because remember that we've observed wet does not equals to zero, so that column goes away. And we could uh, think of this as a factor that looks like this. R, S, zero, one, one, one. Now note that, that this, the, the rows of this factor don't sum up to one. This one sums up to two. Uh, but we don't care, again, because this is a, uh, an MRF. Our, our factors don't need to be normalized. And in fact, they must not be normalized in this case uh, because, because that, would, that would not make sense here. That means that this part of the network goes away. Okay, so again, we have four, four factors here. One, two, three, four. That, that are over C, C and S, C and R, and R and S respectively. Okay. We've now converted to an MRF. Now we can actually run variable elimination. Okay, now that we converted our network to factors, we can actually run variable elimination. So again, we want this probability. So we want the distribution over C, meaning we're gonna to have to eliminate both R and S, and we're gonna use the ordering R first, then S. Okay, let's just go. Okay, so first thing, we wanna eliminate R. So we have to collect all the factors in, uh, that have R in them. There's two such factors. There's the factor C and R, one, zero, half, half, times the factor R, S, zero, one, one, one. We multiply those together what do we get? Well, we're gonna get a factor that's over the three variables, C, R, and S. Let's do all the possibilities. We have zero, 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 one, 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 one. Zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. Then we can go for all, all our values here. Uh, okay, so first thing to notice perhaps is that in the cases where we have C and C equals zero, R equals one, C equals zero, R equals one, that's gonna be a zero. Both of those, R equals zero, S equals zero, that's this one and this one. Those are zero, two. We're just gonna make our lives a little simpler because whatever we, as long as one, one of the two is zero, then they're both gonna be zero. Okay, the rest we'll just multiply out. Okay, so zero, zero, one, one, that's zero, zero. C and R both zero, that we get this one. R and S, zero, one, that's a one. 
There we go. How about over here? C equals one. No matter what it is, it's one half. S equals one, whatever it is, that's a one. So these are all one half. Okay, all we did was we found all the various found all the various uh, cases and multiplied those in. Okay, then we have to sum out R. So we're gonna get a factor over C and S. That's gonna look like, might have made my life easier if I put R as the last one, but oh well. Zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. C equals zero, S equals zero, that's this one, plus this one, zero. C equals zero, S equals one, this one plus this one, that's a one. One, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one half. One, 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 one is one. Did I screw something up? Zero, one, zero, one. No, all good. Good, okay, that was our first step of variable elimination. We successfully eliminated R. We took all the factors that involved R we, which were these two, we multiplied them together to get a big joint factor. We summed out R to, uh, to get a factor that doesn't involve R. Now we have factor over C and S. Let's keep it going. We have to eliminate S now. To eliminate S, we have two factors involving S. We have this one that we just created And we have uh, this one over C and S again, which is C and S, one fourth, three fourths, three fourths, one fourth. By the way, note that we can go back and forth between this, this uh, essentially one-dimensional table form and the two-dimensional table form. Uh, we can do two-dimensional table for any, ver any table over two variables. Of course, we can't do a table over three variables. That's why we had to use the one-dimensional uh, table here. Okay, let's do our multiplication. So we are still gonna have a table over C and S. C and S, zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. Zero, zero is zero times a fourth. That's zero. Zero, one, zero, one, three fourths. One, zero. One, zero, three eighths, one, 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 one fourth. Now we sum out S. That is whoops, that's this is supposed to be a C. We're getting rid of the S. C, these two, is three fourths. The other two is five eighths. Okay, we're almost done. The only thing missing is, uh, so we're almost done because we only have factors over C. 
but don't forget we have a factor that just involves c. Uh, so we have to multiply that in. Fortunately, it's just one half either way. So we get 3 eighths and 5 eighths. And we're done. This is our distribution. We have to uh, normalize it. It happens to be normalized, so, so good. Uh, and we see that it's slightly more likely to be cloudy than it is to be not cloudy. Uh, that probably is intuitive because even though uh, if it's not cloudy, it means we sometimes turn on the sprinkler. Uh, if it's the cloudy, if it being cloudy increases the chance that it rains. Good. That was our uh, variable elimination example. Uh, just as a recap, we took our Bayesian network, we convert it to an MRF, just, just convert it to its constituent factors, incorporate our evidence, did our elimination, or uh, eliminated R, and then S, and then we were done.